Guys, tickets for my special in Chicago on December 2nd went on sale last week, and they sold out uh, on the first day because of you guys. I am so grateful uh, that we are going to add another two shows, but that is it. I'm not adding any more than this, but this is the huge announcement right now. They went on sale on Friday. Um, we are going to do Friday, December 1st as well. Tickets are on sale right now at SavileCanoComedy.com. Uh, they are on sale. You don't even need a promo code. I am not adding more shows after this. The first two sold out immediately. So if you were waiting or thinking about getting tickets, it's Friday, December 1st. Those are on sale at SavileCanoComedy.com. And I will say, because I've been being asked a lot, the contest still stands. If you are going to any of my tapings, any of the four tapings for my uh, stand-up comedy special. I'm going to choose one ticket. It doesn't matter where you sit, and it doesn't matter what taping you're at. I'm going to choose one person, give you a plus one. I'm going to fly you to New York, put you up in a hotel, and bring you on a set of Impractical Jokers. I want to do that as a thank you to you guys because I couldn't believe it sold out so fast. So you're still in it to win it if you buy a ticket. SavileCanoComedy.com right now, Friday, December 1st at the Vic in Chicago. If you have a friend that lives in Chicago or around that area, let them know. Again, I'm going to pick one person out of those tapings. It doesn't matter where you sit. So grab those right away. The rest of the tour is also still on sale with tons of dates. Um, as a matter of fact, this coming weekend, I will be in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and Toledo. And then we're moving on to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and Wilmington, Delaware. In October, we have Macon, Savannah, and Athens, Georgia and even more and more dates. All of them up right now on sale at SavileCanoComedy.com. The Impractical Jokers Cruise is January 22nd to the 26th with Eric Andre, with Steve-O, and we're announcing tons of more comedians and bands this coming week. There's only a few cabins left for that. You can go get those at GetShipFacedCruise.com. That's GetShipFacedCruise.com. Check out NoPresh.com. Uh, no Press Network .com for our merch and SavileCanoComedy.com for my merch. I love you guys. Thank you so much for your support. I really hope to see you on the road. Also, a non-traditional stand-up show I'm doing right here in New York is on November 9th at KGB Bar as part of the New York Comedy Festival. I'm doing a show called Selected Readings. I'll be reading excerpts from my recently released audiobook, The Penthouse Papers, and I'll also be reading some other stuff I've had published over the years, so come on out to that. As far as stand-up goes... I never promised you a Rose Garden is on tour. November 11th, Philadelphia, PA, Theater of the Living Arts. November 17th, Pittsburgh, PA, Bottle Rocket Social Hall. November 18th, Buffalo, New York, the Theater at Seneca One. November 30th, Denver, Colorado, the Summit. December 1st, Phoenix, Arizona, Crescent Ballroom, and December 3rd, Salt Lake City, Utah at the Soundwell. There are more dates coming soon, but get your tickets and show info and all that good stuff for all the stuff I just talked about at joederosa.com. And of course, if you're in New York City, come on down to Joey Rose's, joeyrosesnyc.com, open seven days a week. Taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into All right, the welcome to T-A-S-T-E Buds. It's a special day here. We got a nice guest. We do, and if there's one person that knows about chance, because we do chance on this podcast, if there's one person, it is my friend and trio's champion wrestler, as well as ta former tag team wrestler, Anthony Bowens of the acclaimed everybody in AEW. Everyone. I am so happy to have you, dude. I don't think we've ever had a professional. Have we had a professional wrestler on the pod ever? No, right? No. Yes, number one. I, I, you yeah. are, right? and I'm such a. I am such a fan of wrestling. So for me, this is. We haven't, right? We well, no, got the shirt on, so. Oh, I, I, appreciate, yeah. I appreciate. This Joe, is. Uh, we're already starting off with some yeah, issues. Yeah, I'm not going to mess around. I'm not going to not wear this. This is a shirt for my bar. Uh, this All is, right, it's self promotion. I'll well, no, we're, yeah. <laughs> we made these to self promotion. You get a belt on your arm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't talk to the champ that way, bro. <laughs> you're much, <laughs> Anthony. You're much, much more. Uh, not that I thought you were going to be like a dick or something, but like you're a very gentle, very gentle, uh, approachable personality. Like I thought. I thought you'd you'd be a little like harder. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's um or more intimidating know. or something. You know what I mean? Like it's a I, light switch I, thing because I can okay. get right into intimidating. Like a lot of people say uh, they're scared of me at first because usually I walk around with a very a scowl, ang a scowl on my face because yeah. I truthfully I don't want to be bothered. But <laughs> um, 
for the most part, I'm just, you know. You're I'm one of the nicest I've people I've met. I swear to you. Oh, thank you. That, and that's, you could tell immediately. You yeah, said yeah, it and you so could scary. tell immediately. <laughs> but, you know, I w- even even when I met you, because like, I have plenty of friends and even plenty of wrestler friends, but you would just have just like just a really like soft-spoken way about you that is so approachable. So, and uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Go, can you go? This would be a fun game. Yeah. This, this means happy. This means scowl. Let's go. I want to switch back and forth between okay. two. Ready? <laughs> okay. All right. So you're right, clear that you're happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Happy. Scowl. <laughs> Dude, Pip, do a split screen that shows my hand and his face changing. Ready? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's perfect! Listen to me. Every, uh, he is part of the acclaim now. Everyone, just so you know, I talked about people like Enchant. They have. They're so over. Uh, I mean, I say this stuff as I walk around my house by myself. Okay, <laughs> everybody loves the acclaim, but you you want to talk about somebody who could turn on a dime? Like when you come, when you get into the ring and you start hyping it up in the beginning, when you're just like, Psh, you. What you do with your voice, like I'd be afraid. Are you ever afraid it's gonna crack? And because he gets enraged, <laughs> you know what I mean. He's like, "They're clean," <laughs> and then he runs over and like it's it's just. And I'm always just like, man, I would be nervous if that was mine. Because Max gets to rap on the way in mm-hmm. uh, his take. That's on. very cool. And uh, but uh, for me, you have to get everybody like at the, you have to launch everybody. Are you ever nervous that you're gonna just like? Scream and your voice is going to crack. Has that ever happened? Mm, it's never happened. Okay. Usually my voice is shot, depending on how many shows I have. Okay. Right. Um, but I do have to kind of dig down deep because this voice doesn't really project well right, right, right. <laughs> to a, uh, a live wrestling audience, let, you know, let alone... Uh, so what do you do? You, you, I mean, you... you wow, you, that's just, great. That just come what a great the- finisher. The, the leapfrog thing you just did? Is that I what think, it's called? Uh, it's called the Famouser, yeah, that thing. Oh, I thought it said finisher, mm-hmm. sorry. That's great. I would type in "scissor me, daddy ass" so he can get a general yeah. idea. So yeah, that, yeah. that I want to know. know. If we could play the audio because we might get in trouble for that, but <laughs> great because I think because it's on YouTube, so I think they like uh, we don't have the rights. I think as long as you're not because of what you say. <laughs> okay, so this is this this is your signature yeah. thing that you do. This was National Scissoring Day. <laughs> I'm dude. I mean. <laughs> so that's when it first started. <laughs> it's the best. That's amazing. <laughs> and then this you, is what I, I love about everyone scissoring in the crowd. <laughs> They're scissoring. The, it's, it's just like a, this is what I love about AEW. I have I daydream. And, I have dreams of being the fourth person in this. That's great. This is what I whoa, love whoa, wait, 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 wait. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I don't watch. I don't watch as much as anywhere near as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. But I was a huge uh, wrestling fan growing up. I grew up with the WWF. I was a WWF kid. Hogan era, all that stuff. When I was in college, were, Attitude yeah. Era, I was huge into it. Uh, I fell out after that for you know various reasons. But what I love about AEW, from what I've seen over the years, and what. I, you guys really have brought, in my opinion, the personality back into wrestling. You've brought that. And that's not to knock anybody else, but it's just like you really have, like that whole Scissor Me Daddy, like that's right up there to me with like if you smell and, you know. And that's a big you compliment. Smell, you know, the, <laughs> if you smell. But the Pythons, the, the Hogan, you know, uh, you know, th- whatever that was you called with his arm. I'll take it. I'll take that. Like, you know, <laughs> but yeah, like all of that stuff, like th- like that to me is is you know, the re- wrestling is obviously wrestling, but then the other component to me is always the charisma, the mic skills, you know, and, and that's like, arguably the the more yeah. important part of the two. Cuz I, I for a while was sure. trying to at AEW when we first got signed like I want to have all these crazy matches which I still do, but then once we linked up with Billy Gunn, Daddy Ass and he started teaching us more of the character driven things we don't really have to do as much i can just punch somebody in the face and just go (laughs) and then everybody goes crazy (laughs) meanwhile before that i was you know let's jump off the ladder let's go through the tables let's do all this crazy stuff which you know it's fun but i I enjoy not falling on my head as much (laughs) you know what's funny is i remember watching uh 
uh, it might have still been WWF before they changed the name. But I remember watching like SmackDown or something with my uncle, and uh, The Rock was like, I, I, you know, the most electrifying move, in and he did the people's elbow. Yeah. And when he did it, my uncle goes because he didn't know who he was. He goes. That's the big move. That's the most electric, <laughs> right? And I was like, I was like, you don't get it. It's not about the thing. It's about all the stuff. Forget it. You don't get it. But it's what well, you just said about ours punching. might be you know? a little worse or better depending on your take on it. We have a move called Scissor Me Timbers. Okay. So where nice. Max body slams the guy and he holds up both of his or, legs. Or, or woman. Uh, or woman. <laughs> <laughs> so their legs are up in the air and then I go to the second rope and I leg drop their penis into a scissoring position. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. So, it's it's great. right up there. I hope so, with the people's I, well, elbow. You're you're significantly younger than us. Who, who did you grow up on? Uh, so I started watching watching in 1997. So WCW Sting was like the first thing I saw. Sting okay. Hogan. Oh wow. Okay. And then I uh, started watching WWE more, and I wa- I flipped back and forth. You know, Monday Night War stuff. Um, and I just was a fan ever since. Yeah. Well, excuse me if you've had these questions a billion times, right? But. But like what? So now you are in the locker room with Sting. What's that like? Like, it's, is it just? It's cr- it's funny you ask that because Max and I were looking at each other maybe about a month ago because Sting came walking down the hallway and he said hello and we we're like, Sting just said hello to us, right. and then he walked back and he 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 didn't have to say this. He was like because we wrestled him two years ago, um, in the, on the main event of Dynamite, and he said you know still to this day when people bring up some of my favorite uh, feuds or programs that I've had. Uh, since coming to AEW, and we're right up there with him. So for a guy like oh. me, who you know I idolized him, he was the first thing that got me into wrestling. Right. I was like, that's 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 awesome. really cool. That's so cool. The um, do you, did I ever tell you my wrestling character? <laughs> You're gonna. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't on. wait. That to I made it up. No, let's do it. I did it at a Dan Saint Germain and Mike Lawrence used to do a wrestling comedy show every year at the Creek and Cave when Creek and Cave was still in New York, and it was thirty five. Comedians would have to come out, and each guy had to do a promo. Yeah, oh, that's. Funny. And I had, I was like, dude, I have a character I made up when I was in college, and I was like, I'll do that character. But my wrestling character, because I'm Egyptian, his name is King Touch. <laughs> <laughs> right? I wonder where this is going. <laughs> no, like touch. Joe, like, what are you touching? <laughs> <laughs> King Touch. He's an ha- he's a handsy older man. <laughs> <laughs> the touch is based on. Mm, no, give me, give me, from, give me. He's a frail old man. Yeah, yeah. He'll touch you. <laughs> no, the touch is from uh, Biggie. When, when remember when Biggie say, you know, I'll, I'll reach out and touch you, meaning like I'll I'll smack yeah, you yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. You touch, can get touch. touch. Yeah. So the, that that's what the touch part meant. Okay. And then the two moves, uh, my two closers were the pyramid drop and the Nile pile. The Nile wow. pile. Wow. Nile, Nile pile's got a good ring. What about the pyramid scheme? Oh, that's Ooh. great. Pyramid scheme. Oh, He's going for the good. pyramid scheme. And then you got to do it with your tag team guy. Sure. It's got to be another guy, so it's like a, a you know, the way a pyramid scheme. Just keep conning right. people into losing matches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love no, it. Wow. But what was your, what, what was your, like, demeanor? What was your aura? Like, what did you? I do the you, voice, you, like, uh, the voice was like, uh, I'm trying to think of like, like a, what is he gonna do? give me like a thing to say, and I'll say it in the voice that I had. <laughs> give me a thing to say. <laughs> Um, no, say, say come good. here, I want to touch you. Uh, th- th- say, th- say this Wednesday night at Dynamite. Oh, if there's one thing that'll happen, you will get touched. Yeah. The uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I go. You better watch out because the king will touch you. Like that. That was the voice. <laughs> <laughs> that was the I voice. I don't understand the voice. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was the voice. That was the voice. It was, that voice. It was, like, it was one of the voices I would do. What's the inspiration for that voice? You sound like a of, mad Kermit the Frog. <laughs> it was one of the you voices. Were gonna get tucked. <laughs> it was one of the voices I would do in a. Remember when Prince Paul was here? Yeah. And I gave him the CD of my oh, old rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of the characters that did that was named Bernard Valentine, and 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 that was the voice. Basically, I'm a little rusty on it, but that was the voice that but Bernard. It's like a higher <laughs> register. Yeah, it was like it was like an old school rap. You know where I came up with that voice? When I first started doing comedy, I had a joke about old school rappers. Okay. And I'll go, ha, 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 like that. <laughs> and do because that's what they all sounded like. Not the, all everybody, but yeah, it was like, you know. Yeah. I'm a, so I get on down to the da-da-da-da. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that, that, you know. 
Definitely. I don't. I don't see this. I don't see that as a wrestler. I also don't see it as a King Touch. <laughs> it's my wrestler. You it's came my out. Character. It sounded like a. It sounded like a. Um, it sounded like a, a, a southern. Yeah. Frog and, you, and <laughs> it just doesn't go. With good King ma- Touch. It's a good manager. <laughs> the voice. Egyptian King Touch. It's a good manager voice. <laughs> Let me tell you something, AEW fans. Oh, okay. You got my boys are gonna come out here and touch some people tonight. <laughs> that, it's a that, good that, manager voice. Oh, that now I'll give you a little mouth of the south there. Yeah, That's exactly. Oh, Jimmy Hart. Yeah, yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little yeah. MOS. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it is Jimmy Hart is an Egyptian it, though. So no, no. But this is it's diversity hires. You're okay. Sure. 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 What would Inclusive at like? AEW, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> you never came up with a. You're a huge wrestling man. You never fantasized and like made up I a went, wrestler. So guy? I was on the Jericho um, cruise. Um, What's the Jericho cruise? I mean, I know what it is, but what? what he does a rock and wrestling Jericho. Okay. I had done. We had done a cruise for a few years, and he was going to have one. We were buddies with him, and uh, he, he had booked up, and we're like, "Oh, we want to come on." He's like, "Just come on." So we went on. Me and Q did "What Say You" our podcast, mm-hmm. okay, and uh, our defunct podcast. But we went on and we did a show. They, we were in the ring for the show, which was awesome. And the whole show was like basically we were comparing. We made up characters for it and compared. That's the only time I did it. But I, yeah. think I, I might have. I might have some in here. Did I tell you this? By the way, we're at the San Gennaro Festival mm-hmm. yesterday. I was telling you earlier. I'm there with my partner Paul Italia, who I own my. Joey His Rose. last name's Italia. Italia. Well, that's yeah. perfect for this. <laughs> He's the guy I own my sandwich shop with. Anyway, so I can't believe I forgot to tell you this. We're standing eating fried clams at the Umberto stand. <laughs> <laughs> this lady comes up to us. She goes, "Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Are you two the famous pranksters?" <laughs> <laughs> And I go, what? <laughs> she goes, we're not pranksters. <laughs> she goes, are you two the famous, you're the famous pranksters from TV? And I'm like, so I guess she th- recognized me from a Taste Buds clip, thought he was you, <laughs> and then <laughs> thought Taste Buds was somehow part of a practical joker. I just was like, no, miss, that's not us. And she was like, but I know you. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, no, you don't. I, don't. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you, I didn't know what to say. What do you get now when you're out and about? I mean, like a wrestling, is a wrestling thing they have a filter? Oh, you do you have to scissor people on the streets and stuff? I'm yes, assuming you I do, scissor right? people everywhere, yeah. legitimately. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was. There's no not doing it. You you must carry antibacterial. Scissors or oh yes, I always have hand yeah. sanitizer. <laughs> yeah. Actually, story. Um, I was taking and I will be blunt, a massive shit, and I went to go, <laughs> and I went to <laughs> go wash my cons? hands. <laughs> And before I can get to the sink, someone no. walked in no. and was like, "Oh my God, Bowens! Oh my God, can you scissor me?" And in the without bathroom, f- he did that in the bathroom, and without thinking, I just went <laughs> and I scissored him. It's the hand I wipe with. Right, right, right. right. right, right <laughs> so I called wow. that the dirty scissor. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, we oh, we wow. do it it's everywhere. Fault. It's, it's his totally fault. his fault. You don't approach a man in the bathroom like yeah, that. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, it's do everywhere now. Well. When you do the the, the scissor thing on the street, you don't have to go. <sighs> like you just you just do it like I give a little like casual. motorboat. Oh, oh you to will give do a little it. taste of what I actually do. Right. I guess I guess, I guess that's what the because it is funny. The casual scissoring is very funny. Like I'll talk to you tomorrow, but thanks. Talk to you. Yeah. Later. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's, 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 but it's even casual. funnier with a casual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, watch big, casual. Big fan, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. It's just the casual. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> and I, uh, it's a subtle. I love. I his. I have it in my head right now. You getting pulled over by a cop, and you're and you, the windows down. And he walks over. He recognizes you, and you think he, you think he might recognize you. And I picture you going like this. It's like, like just, <laughs> just 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 throwing it out there. Like, well, that slightly me? happened two days ago. Not. I didn't get pulled over, but yeah. I was walking by a police station to go to a show, and the yeah. cop stopped me, and he was like. I got to scissor you, man. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's like, okay. For, for people that don't know, how did it come about? Yeah, that's I, I, I wanted to know that as well. So uh, my partner, Max Caster, and I, we are the acclaimed. We're a tag team. You guys team. are both East Coast guys. I'm East right? Coast. Right. I'm from New Jersey. He's from Long Island. Yeah. Um, we both trained under the same school, Creator Pro in New Jersey. He was in Long Island. I was in New Jersey. And um, we got signed together at AEW. The owner, Tony Khan, uh, made us a tag team called the acclaimed. And he, he raps. I'm his hype man. And we were always just trying to find little things that were fun to do. Caster loves just taking things the extra mile and playing jokes on me in the ring. So one day I threw up my my fingers like an A for the acclaimed. And he came from behind me and he scissored my <laughs> fingers. And it's on camera. I go, 
I'm like, oh, like <laughs> we're gonna get fired, like, <laughs> right? Because like, I'm very, I was very reserved. I kind of tapped too much into my like my normal self. Sure. And Max was always like balls to the wall. Yeah. Um, we did a couple more times. They were like, oh, I don't know if the network wants you guys like doing that, so maybe hold off. And then at some point, we were just like, fuck this. We we're gonna just, we got to do something. Yeah. So we started doing it again, and then I noticed um, when I was laying on the ground, the front row had their fingers out. They're like, Bowen, scissor me, come on. And I went, huh, we got something. So I started leaning into it on the entrance. I added the motorboat thing. Yeah. Um, I added the, we'll throw our fingers up and we'll go corner to corner. And the crowd goes, oh. And then, nah. yeah. well, you know what and I mean, then Billy Gunn capped it off with the daddy S. The daddy S. And then the, mer- I mean, you guys had to be like top merch. I mean, it's like. Yeah, for right? uh, over half a year, we were the top merch yeah. sellers. So they, they fought us on that shirt too. I, every week was like, make the shirt. Make the shirt. Make the shirt. Tony then wanted the it. Shelves. And then it yeah, it became number one shirt in like a day or two. Yeah. I love, by the way, that you're working, <laughs> excuse me, that you work with Billy Gunn. Because New Age Outlaws. Good, so good. Were my favorite tag team ever. Like I, I Oh, really? When they came out, ladies and gentlemen, children of the road dog, Jesse J. Like uh, the badass Billy Gunn. I used to love... I used to get so excited. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> yeah. I would get you didn't so know he revved it. up at that. I just got <clears throat> chills saying it. I think you underplayed his wrestling knowledge. Well, I knew you hadn't watched recently. I've just been out of it. So what happened was when the Attitude Era ended. King Touch had his day. <laughs> yeah. When the Attitude Era ended. You should be, King Touch in this day and age is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> just immediately me too. Just like, he just comes out like, I'm King Touch. And no, like, that's not music Touch styles. like that. Though. I know, I know. Yeah. But when the Attitude Era ended, it was, it was coincidentally right around the time I was getting out of college. Okay. And so, so this era that I loved so much that brought me back into it ended, and there was a major shift in wrestling, just personality-wise. And it was also, when I got out of college, I moved not just away from home, but I moved to Austin, Texas. So just everything traditionally for me that, that had gotten me back into wrestling and what it was and like watching it with these certain friends in this certain region of the country yep, and yep. all that stuff... It all went away at once, and then the next thing you know, it's like five years later, and you're like, oh, I, I haven't watched in a while. Like, oh, John Cena? Oh, yeah, okay. You know, like, and that was it. I just kind of never, I just kind of never slid back in, and then this thing that started to interest me again, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but Kurt Angle was one of the earlier guys that went over to AEW, if I'm not. Not AEW. That wasn't, what was, what did Kurt TNA. Angle? Oh, you're probably thinking of Cody Rhodes. Who did Chris, Angle Chris go Chris Jericho? Over to? Who did Angle go over? Angle TNA. Left. It was TNA. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, you were talking about back. Oh, you okay. Me when you said AEW. Sorry. So TNA, when I remember when he went to that other league, that was when I start. I was like, oh, that's cool. There's like this new league or whatever. And then later, I heard about AEW, and I've I've tuned in here and there and watched clip. But like, I truly mean what I say. Like the thing that I think, and I've said it to you before. What I like about what you guys are doing, and I should start watching. But wrestling is like comic books, man. Sure. You know, you're like, how many issues in are we? You know what I mean? I got to jump in. Yeah, I got to learn. Up at any time, I mean, you know? I th- yeah, I think you could pick up at any time, depending on whatever that, when whatever you jump that story in. Whatever storylines are at that time. That's all. And then yeah. you get a little back. You know, for me, dude, I I I, I end up getting SummerSlam tickets like seven years <coughs> ago from somebody, and I hadn't gone. I didn't. I stopped watching as a kid. I, I the Attitude Era. I only watched peripherally. My friends had a, we had a beach house, and they all watched it. And I so I only saw it peripherally. And then when I went to that live event, I was like immediately hooked again. And then and then when when AEW launched, it was unbelievable because we're also on the same. It's kind of the similar and story. With, yeah, to me because yeah. I fell out a little bit. And probably like 2005, I, I watched loosely, but yeah. like everybody in high school, it's like, oh, it's not cool anymore. I secretly still loved it, but I didn't watch yeah. as much. And then I went to SummerSlam 07 at um, IZOD. Okay. And I was like, huh, this is fine. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I got buddies. A casual fan, they'd be like, I'll do that. And then, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to start where I have buddies that, you know, Colt Cabana is a, a buddy of mine. Colt. And, uh, and Dylan Postel now is, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, so like. Hornswoggle. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Gotta, I just got to. They're both buddies. Shout out to the dude. Yeah. Shout out to both guys. I got to start watching again. Dude, is it rude? I have to pee so bad. And I'm, I am I don't want to. We'll, we'll stop for a sec. Okay. We'll I just, we'll I'll be really fast. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I just don't. What's up, guys? Let's talk about Game Time. Game Time is an app I use, and you should too, to get last-minute tickets at the best prices guaranteed. 
Uh, they're all in prices. You get the views from your seat on the app so you know exactly what it's going to look like. They have a best price guarantee. Uh, where in as you will always get the press price. If you find tickets in the same sectional row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Um, these are tickets to everything. There are tickets to concerts and sports and musicals and comedy. Uh, everything is on there, okay? I personally don't like uh, buying tickets ahead of time anymore. You never know what's going to happen. That being said, if you're coming to see me, buy your tickets immediately. Don't wait till the end. <laughs> or if you do wait till then, you use Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Create an account and use the code TasteBuds for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code uh, TasteBuds. T A S T E B U D S for twenty dollars off. De uh, download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Guys, let's talk about Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against numbers. That's all it is. So instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection and watch the winnings roll in. Some examples. You have quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. This week on the Prize Picks, um, basically, for example, I'm just picking with players, right? So after the, I don't know, I mean, after the drubbing that the Giants took last week, I feel they're on a bounce back. So I'm going to take Saquon for more than 60 yards. And even Mahomes, I think if Kelsey's playing this week, uh, I'm going to go more than two passing touchdowns on Mahomes. And that's it. That's as easy as it gets. Um, so go to prizepicks.com slash taste buds and use the code taste buds for a first deposit match up to $100. Okay. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash taste buds and use code taste buds for a first deposit match up up to $100. Uh, Daily fantasy sports made easy. That is prize picks. And again, guys, if you are a little bit like you don't like drafting full teams or betting games against each other, this is totally different way to play. And you can root for one player. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you're into football, uh, I would say check it out. Before we even jump to the wrestling, can 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 you pass? Can I can I hold that belt? Can I see that belt? The scissor title? Yeah. The trio. Sure. This is the. Tr Feel the weight on this thing. Feel the weight on that. I mean, were you expecting it to be that that heavy? No. That's crazy. So, uh, do you know how who like how how long does this take to get to you? How did, when did you find out? Because they're not always customized, correct? No. So we are. So this is luckily we are popular. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, when I requested it, this is the first it. time I've seen a a belt like this is a another level of customization. Like I love the pink, and then but to have this scissor on the end, dude. It's so funny that they were pushing. I don't want to disrespect this, but is it okay if I put it over my Go, Oh, it's right, not disrespectful. Right. I don't know how like precious you are with it. I don't, I don't, I, I'm the champ now. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool, dude. This is like this is a dream I'll never achieve. Like I'm the I'm, you know because someone like him's like, oh, I like wrestling. I'll become a wrestler. Like I, I, I mean, you were an athlete, obviously. Baseball. A baseball athlete. Oh, really? Would you? W what position? I was an outfielder. Okay. Um, Center field in high school, and then two years at Seton Hall University oh, in yeah. the Big East. I was in left field, and then I transferred to Montclair State, and I was in right field. That's crazy. So, and then you were just like, you went to you went to SummerSlam 07, <laughs> and you were like, I'm not going to play baseball anymore. I'm going to rest. Well, no, I, I played through college, and I wanted to play pro ball, but I was uh, a terrible tendonitis in my elbow, okay. and I kind of fell out of the love of the game because playing for, uh, at least for the guy at Montclair State, he was just miserable to play for, and yeah. I just didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So when I stopped playing, I was trying to figure out something that was like athletic yeah. and creative yeah. to do. You went from one really intense thing to the next. Yep. Did you going into it? Obviously, there's no promises on anything, right? So the intensity how how long is the how how intense and how long is it um, when you're training and you're you're like hoping to get like what is it try out or is it like they come watch like? So I, I got you. You can train a, a train. You can join a wrestling school. Right. There's. Wrestling schools all over the place. Right. Specifically, I ran. Remember Santino Morella? Yeah, of the, course. Mm -hmm. yeah. I ran into him at the gym, and he gave me the number to Pat Buck, to who's the owner. He actually is an agent at AEW now, which right. is cool. Like he does my matches. Right. Um, but he's the owner and trainer at Creator Pro um, in Rawway, New Jersey. And uh, I started training with him the next week, and then eight. 
took me eight years to get signed, I think. Eight years on the independence. And this is living your life and then grinding everything you have yep. at the school. At and the school. Not even knowing work. if you're going to get to a level that you're happy with or that you'll become a professional wrestler. Yep. So what's what's it like the day that you get that call? Like what how does that how does that take us through that? So for me it was a little I was lucky because I had the option of choosing between WWE or AEW. Um I had they had WWE had said they were going to sign me back in 2017 and then nothing just happened. I I never heard from them again. Okay. And then I worked for AEW during the pandemic as like an extra. They gave me a match and then legitimately the next day they re- WWE reached out and was like, "Oh, <laughs> Are you a free agent? And then they offered me a contract. I said yes. And then I didn't know that. Yeah, I I, I committed to NXT. They never <laughs> sent me a contract. <sighs> and Tony Khan found out about it. And since I didn't hear anything for a second time, and there was a bunch of other stuff going on, but he yeah. flew me down to Jacksonville where I met Castor, who was going through something similar. Mm-hmm. And we did a tryout match for him. And I came back through the curtain and I saw him give a thumbs up and he offered us contracts. And I said, this is where I want to be. Holy That's shit. great. What, what's your feeling in that moment? It's like. I was elated. I, I cried. I, my, yeah. I, uh, when I first got the original phone calls with my family and Michael, my boyfriend, and uh, it, was, it was just great. I can't even imagine, dude. I can't it was even imagine. Such a relief. And then, to, and then when you first won these. Yeah, we won the tag titles yeah. last year in New York City at Arthur Ashe Stadium yeah. for the first time, and it was just, I just got chills. It was so cool. I That's watched. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. That's, I'm so happy for you, man. It couldn't, yeah. ha- couldn't happen to a nicer person. Really. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's great. That's um, great. I can have this then, or? Um, well, they're selling like those replicas for 5000 You know what else? They're, they're not replicas, excuse me. People yelled at us all weekend because of these. the price point. They're legitimate. Belts handmade from the uh, from the person himself who yeah. created them, red leather belts. So people can get this belt. Fans can get ten this. made in existence. Replica belts take about eight months to get produced. So that will be down the line. But like the legitimate, like if I lost that, they would make a new one for me. That's the one you'd be purchasing. No way. Yes. And oh, so when are they, are they on sale already? They are on sale. There are six left. How much do they cost? Five thousand dollars. They cost four to be made. Wow. Actually, did I show you the original sketch I made for that? You insure this thing? No. <laughs> oh, you you helped design it? I I can't believe you <laughs> loosely leave the did. house with it, dude. I wouldn't take it anyway. Well, he'll just kill somebody. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, Jesus, man. I would be like, I'd get be. Get away! Get away! I'm nervous. <laughs> like carrying my computer around, I get nervous. Like this is like crazy. Tell, tell me if you feel a difference in your demeanor. I just remembered I'm also friends with Tyrus, another wrestler that I'm, that I'm uh, friendly with. Throw that around and guess, like, how does that make you feel? It's heavy. Right, right. I know. I don't. I didn't mean literally. I just <laughs> meant like, doesn't that do something for you? No. I mean, no. Own it. Like it's yours. Make believe it's yours. Is what I'm saying. Hold. Put your hand on it. Feel it. I understand. Make believe you're a champion for once in your goddamn life. <laughs> it it feels secure. You don't feel like a, a a a boost in your confidence with that over your shoulder. No, really. I I, I it feels got a, good. I got a little bit of a, <laughs> such a I, miserable I little, answer. Does, he sounded yeah. like Squidward in the the, I threw it on the you. magic conch. <laughs> like no. <laughs> I, I felt like a little bit of a, like a go get him <laughs> when I threw that good. on. I felt like let's go. Like who's next? No, it it, it it's, it's added weight to my body. <laughs> I don't feel that I can move quickly. Uh, or I'm like, much less go feel. He's like cumbersome. Oh, wait, wait. So I'm not going to tell you what activity I was doing uh, before I drew this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was sitting there thinking about it, and I drew the sketch up, and I legitimately sent this into the office. <laughs> for for the sketch. <laughs> Show it to the camera. I post <laughs> can, it. We, can we? Can I'll send it. To, can you text it and we'll yeah, post yeah. it lo- like the full. That <laughs> and that became it's so, this. It's so ridiculously <laughs> unofficial. It's like it, it's like literally it's it's hysterical. But I don't know if I would have sent that. In. Is that <laughs> you wanted a smiley face as the middle? No, I like I was hoping that. <laughs> so they had a nice you know day. I just forgave my friendly smile. <laughs> can I? So I was you, happy at the time. It's your let's idea say. to do the edges like that, like a. Yeah, because I, yeah. I pictured like a belt at the end where it can that's scissor itself so and we can cool. scissor each other. The uh, that's that's really interesting. What, oh, oh that was, that's what I was going to say. Your parents saw that. On? Then, I'm going to put this down now. Uh, yes, that's fun. We okay. should do uh, before the battle though. One thing I want to say that I also love about what you're doing 
is uh, with the scissor thing. It's the it's the perfect level of immaturity that wrestling has when it's at its best. Yep. Yes. It's wrestling at its best is is a little immature. Sometimes it's a little insulting, <laughs> but in a funny way, you know. Absolutely. And like that's just that's what I always, you know. Like, you know, like The Rock, Poontang Pie. Like, it's like that kind of thing. I just, I love it. So I have a question. So you you, you touched on this earlier about, like, you're not sure if they're going to want you to do that. Because, you know, when, it is the, is it still veil Like, it, when you say it, as, according to AEW and, and, and the fan, like, when, when you guys do that, it's just a, your own, you co-opted this thing and it's basically like giving each other a fist pound kind of way. It's it's but it harkens to something else. <laughs> sure. So like, how have you gotten any pushback at all in any capacity whatsoever? Like advertisers or like or just from Tony or whatever. Like I, once they were on board, I mean, once everyone's doing it, I mean, because you said they pushed back on the shirt, even right? I think it was more the network pushed back okay. on it. <laughs> Not to get in trouble. We love you, network. <laughs> um, TBS and TNT. Um, yeah, we're in the same family. Oh my, yes, my that's right. Are in the same yes, family. True yeah. TV. Yeah. Um, but yeah, originally they pushed back, and then we got it, and they saw the success of it, and then they started making commercials about it to to uh, you know hype up Dynamite every week, and we went, mm. huh? <laughs> like we right. told you, <laughs> right, if right. you would have did it from the beginning, right. you know we'd have had a little bit more of it. But they they're all about it now. Right. They really are. All right, I'm gonna hit you just with a couple of my wrestlers. Just top, just top line, and then we're gonna move right into the battle. Okay. okay. All right. I don't remember these. I'm not saying they're good. Um, I one one guy was worked for the TSA. One wrestler, and his moves were the full body cavity search, uh, and the pre check. And that person was always in a state of snark. Okay. What's his name? I, I love that. I, I don't know. It's just like a, like, a, like a broad stroke. You don't have a name for the character? Bill. No, come on. We got to think of a name. Well, this I'm, is amateur hour. Well, I came in with finishing I'm moves, a title. I'm describing the character, though. Not like necessarily the, the... You need the naming. The name's the whole thing. I could right. sit here all day and give you personalities. The, give me a, get uh, a name. Well, TSA. I don't like the rest of these. The deadbeat dad, his moves, the, the alimony check. <laughs> the alimony check <laughs> and the daddy's home. Um, let me see. <laughs> Hold on. Uh... Like drunk dad would be good. And he takes his belt off to beat you with it. You know. Okay. What I mean? All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Papa Bear. See, you name the wrestler. The, Papa the, Bear's a good name for a wrestler. The, the hoarder. And uh, basically, uh, he he bought a championship belt at a yard sale and can't let it go. I don't know. These are, these are bad. These are terrible. Devin from the <laughs> Devin love, from the corner. I love these. Devin from the corner is a meth head who people are afraid <laughs> to touch lest they contract hepatitis or various other ailments. He wins by count out undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wins by count out. No one wants to go near him. Uh, triple tag a trio. Snap, crackle, pop. The rice okay, crispy. Yeah, okay, we got some yeah. now. They don't mention cereal or puns. But okay, a demon child whose half brother killed and burned their family and was left physically and emotionally damaged comes back to avenge their family's murder and settle the score. Is his only reason for existing. Then when that feud ends, you stick around for twenty years and just become a wrestler. That's already a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Kane. That was the joke. <laughs> uh, uh, so pick a name. All right. <laughs> how, many, how many of these are we doing here? All right, Joe. This is, the, Joe how, the how, how, just give me an idea of where the finish line is All with right. this list. Joe the Uber no, no, no. driver. No, no, no. <laughs> give me an idea of where the. F I'll say many? one more. Okay. The uh, Joe the Uber driver. I named him Joe. He shows up late to the match and he goes past the ring, <laughs> and he thinks he knows the best way that the match should go. <laughs> I gave you a true. Idea for a wrestler. The, okay, gluten. you're working bits here. Gluten. These are these bits. Aren't bits. You didn't think these were good ideas. Gluten. These I think they're bits. fantastic. To be honest with you, coming from <laughs> someone in the industry, babe. Because you guys are friends. He's got to say that. No. <laughs> you're on the same network. Right, you got to right, do let, cross let's, promos. Let's get whatever. to the battle. We got <laughs> today. <laughs> Anthony came in and we, he gave us a list of things that he liked, yes. from foods to to rest of this, that, the other, and one that stuck stuck well, out. Well, it was he said IHOP, right? And we said I said I like IHOP versus Denny's, and we we're kind of going back and forth on that. And then Anthony, you said. Well, you know, I really like Waffle House, too. And I said, I hate Waffle House. And you immediately were like, what? 
Yeah. And I was like, okay, it's got to be Waffle House versus Denny's. And I think because these are the two. These are the these are the two places you go when you have very limited or or or, or, or in a rush breakfast options, or you or are very hammered. late at night. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And also. Both no strangers to controversy. Sure. Waffle House is a fight every other week. Gets on to you know uh, world Waffle star hip hop or whatever. Own, is its own federation. <laughs> yes. Sure, we yeah. can put that on TV right away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So lots of fights over at the Waffle House, and then Denny's has gotten into some some social issues. <laughs> See, I'm not too familiar with the Denny's, so you're gonna have to explain it. I don't remember exactly what it was, but Denny's got in trouble. There was something racial with Denny's, where Denny's was like racist for a minute, like where really? Denny's <laughs> agreed today to pay more than fifty-four million dollars to lawsuits filed by thousands of black customers okay. who had been refused service. <laughs> I'm not laughing at the racism. <laughs> okay. I'm just it's just wild. That we Denny's, didn't hear about that. That's a fifty-four million dollar yeah, payout fi- by thousands. I didn't hear about or that. Or had been forced to wait longer or pay more than white customers. That's insane. How does how does that come together? How do thousands of people? I've never. Well, listen. Okay, so so you're the poster boy for them. Got it. <laughs> so he, he, I'm not he, listening. He, want, I'm he def- staunchly wanted to. Uh, I didn't to know. Battle I didn't Denny's. know it was that bad. Yo, you knew it was something. You knew I'm it was defending something. Their menu. You, I'm you defending You said their they menu. they had something racist, but ah, who gives a shit is what he said. <laughs> I'm defending their menu. <laughs> so I was. I, so it was going to be. I, it was going to be IHOP Denny's, and I thought that was very, pretty similar. But I think Waffle House really s- shakes it up a bit, and I thought. I thought IHOP was gonna was gonna um, maybe take a dive because they they had an identity crisis a couple of years ago where they switched to a burger restaurant, but then they switched back, and so you let them go the way of the dodo bird. You took Waffle House. I think Waffle House now in light Wait, of you're the, just moderating, correct? Yeah, I'm just giving like the. Uh, but you're not part of the battle. So, well, I'm I, saying you're not picking a side for a loss or a win. No. Okay, let's start the battle. Yeah. This is going to be the greatest match you've ever been involved in. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Time two. B-A-T-T-L-E, buds. All right. So Sal is moderating. I am Team Denny's. Anthony is Team Waffle House. People love Waffle House. You're right. They They're love scrappy. it. They're scrappy. And in light of the horrid and abundant racial accusations that you're going to stand <laughs> on the hill to die for, I now think there should be a shift. I think Waffle House is I was gonna, Originally, I had the odds makers picking Denny's. I think Denny's is still going to take this. I think Denny's... Denny's, if you're watching, and we know that you are. Denny's... We have nothing against you. We're reading a report here. Uh, hopefully, uh, that's something that was corrected, moved past, and uh, and that uh, has nothing Denny's to do with anything is, anymore. I don't know. Denny, as far as these types of establishments go, we'll call them pancake houses, okay? As far as these places go, Denny's is the McDonald's of these chains. Denny's is... And you know it, and I know it. I would it, say they beat Perkins, we, but I, I think IHOP is bigger than Denny's. I, I think IHOP's much bigger than Well, Denny's. if we were arguing IHOP, then maybe that would matter. <laughs> oh. Also, to be uh, fair. No, Denny's, Denny's is you Denny's, can, you're gonna Denny's hang, baby. You're going to hang your racist hat on nothing but the Grand Slam breakfast. <laughs> you're the one that just apologized to them and are now complicit in their acts. No, I said I hope <laughs> you best. You can't hang everything on the Grand Slam breakfast. I'll say this about Denny's. Little racist, no fights. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Racist towards Waffle. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, no, but Denny's, I, 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 like, I, I mean, look, IHOP has always been around, right? Sure. And Waffle House has grown. Now, Waffle House used to only be that you could only find one, like, it was, in it was the a south. southern region yes. place. Now they're 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 way more prominent now. But to me, why I say Denny's is the McDonald's. Denny's, as far back as I can remember, so I'm 46. <laughs> All right, there. When I was eight, 17 is when I started, you know, hanging out, smoking a little pot, whatever it was. D- Denny's was the place. But like, you had the other options, and you chose Denny's. I hop, Denny's was, was I what was, was accessible. Wait, where'd, I you, was yeah, around, where'd you grow up? It was never open late. Guys, hello, fresh. I wonder if if our good our, our like avid listeners can tell me about HelloFresh because I say it so much I feel like you guys have to be using it by now and you have to have your own experience and you have to know all the deets. But I'm gonna do it again. HelloFresh with them you get farm fresh pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store. You count on HelloFresh to make your home cooking easy. You make it fun. You make it affordable. That's why it is America's number one meal kit. Um, 
They do all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned. They're ready to cook, uh, along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards. It's very, very easy. Um, even though the fall can feel jam-packed, HelloFresh makes whipping up home-cooked dinners actually doable. They have quick and easy options, including 15-minute meals. Um, I mean, that's less time than it takes to actually get a delivery. So come on. With everything pre-portioned, deliver right to your door. It's a no-brainer. Uh, take the hassle out of meal time. It's also 25% cheaper than grocery store shopping and uh, and takeout. Uh, I never was a cook, and I've been using this. And I'm not a great cook, but this is the only way that I will cook when I have everything laid out in front of me. Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash 50TasteBuds and use code 50TasteBuds for 50. That's 50. 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50, 50 Taste buds and use code five zero taste buds for fifty percent off plus free shipping. Come on, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. It just wasn't the place. Like Denny's, the reason I say the McDonald's because McDonald's was the other fast food, like late night fast food. Like you're going to get burgers, you want to go through a drive through. It's Mc, you know it was it was always McDonald's. Denny's to me, not to say no, that there weren't any others. I'm just saying Denny's to me was that. Denny's was like the go to. Like hey man, it's it's twelve thirty at night. You want something? Like, we're we're going to go to Denny's. Why? Why isn't Waffle House that? Wait, well, where did you grow up? Waffle House back uh. then. Waffle House very much was that. And holy shit! Did you see that guy wing? The, did that chick just throw that chair? Yeah. Holy shit! Did the thing about wait, 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 wait. See a reaction? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, see a reaction? You just jumped out of your chair to watch something that happens at a Waffle House. And I know we're talking about menus, but you sit at a Denny's. You get a bunch of old fogies sitting there with their little coffees and oh. shit. You get prime entertainment as long as. Uh, Coupled with an amazing breakfast, whether oh, it's so in the you, morning, that's, nighttime. That's an interesting take. The food is the staple. You're getting the food. Yes. But you have, you have a chance at big, big time entertainment. You go to a strip club. Viral you know, you entertainment. There's entertainment here's, in front of you. Here's Same why, thing with Waffle House. I will say this about Waffle House. I never eat at Waffle House. Here's why. Let me establish why I hate Waffle House so much. I don't uh, go in there without Mason. Waffle Muffles. House, and I'm a big believer in fast food. I, I, I like fast food. I enjoy it. Waffle House is the only, because it is sort of, these are sort of fast food places. They're cousins, yeah. Yeah. Waffle House, and I say this without exaggeration, it is one of the only places I've ever eaten where the stomach ache starts. <laughs> we used to call it the shit cramps. You eat something bad and you go, you have the pain in your stomach and you have to shit like three times in a row. I get that stomach ache as I'm still eating the food. It's just so greasy. It's I'm like, oh my God, I feel terrible immediately but if you're talking about like drunk but drunk or high you're gonna want that grease no? i don't it's too much even then i don't like it but here's the thing the last time i ate at a waffle house i went to it was years ago i was on the road i got to i got into georgia very late and it was literally the only thing that was open and i went in and ate and it was after this stuff started happening when these videos of the fights were coming out and i gotta tell you it did not enhance the experience i was freaked out when i was eating in there because i was yeah. like is some crazy fight gonna break out because there were some people that were a little off in there yeah <laughs> yeah but that's 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 basically if you're an adventurer you're gonna want to eat at I, didn't li- I, I tell you the, the prices are unmatched i remember looking yes. at the first time i went and we were on the road like over a decade ago and we went and they had the, the laminated menu and she dropped it on a table and I thought I was literally in 1984. Yes, I agree I was with like, that. wait, the, the whole meal is $3.95? That, you know? yes. So you can't beat that. You know what I mean? I but, agree with that. But I will say, I've, I've had... M- I've had experiences in both, okay? In a Denny's, I've gone to a Denny's uh, on the road. I met up with uh, Roy Wood, Steve Byrne, and, a, and, 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 and Q and us, we all went to a Denny's. And we were so By drunk, the way, shout outs to everybody in that story, but particularly Steve Byrne. Steve Byrne is real good for a let's go get some oh, yeah. down and dirty food. It was after our show. Yeah, like he's and really everyone, into that. And we that. were all drunk. Yeah. And we went to the Denny's. We were in, uh, is it Scottsdale? I what, it's a place in Arizona sure. where they use golf carts to get around. Right outside Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Probably Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Scar- Scar- Scottsdale. 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 Yeah. yeah. And uh, we went to the Denny's and we ordered, we sat down, we were these people, we said, we'll have one of everything. And then they- At Denny's, at not Denny's. Waffle House. Okay. It was like 15 or 10, 12 of us. And we sat around the table, and they dropped him, and we ever the rule you took a bite and passed, took a bite and passed. So I've had some fond memories. Of <laughs> and then you caught COVID afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you caught it. <laughs> I gotta tell you, the silverware though is is really like it's just a step above plastic. It's metal. It is. But it <laughs> it's metal, but it's a, a thin sheath of metal that is 
it just feels odd in the hand, and there's 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 stains on them, regardless of where you are or when I you go. I will say, when you're dealing with metal silverware in a restaurant at a Denny's level, you're going to have spotted silver. Quite quite, yeah. you're not getting stainless. Not saying steel. you get something. I'm going to be honest with you. You're probably not going to get very good silverware at Waffle House. Yeah. So I think <laughs> no, be I think those cancel out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll both, tell you. both these places, by the way, both of these places have a. I've been into both of them enough. They they all smell. They all have their own smell. Every Denny sure. smells the same. Every Waffle House smells the same. Always, all the time. Which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is interesting about both places. Do you feel like if if I was applying for a job at a Waffle House, that's a whole nother level of excitement? You know what I mean? Like that's it's, you're not just going in. You're not dipping a toe now. You're gonna work there. Like you're gonna be there more than you, as much as you are home. You're mm -hmm. gonna work full time at a Waffle House. <sighs> you got to take a Krav Maga class or something like that. You have to like make sure that you are prepared to to defend your life and a good PPO. I do think yeah. there. It also is kind of <laughs> club energy. There's good party moments in a Waffle House. Okay, it's not right. Just bad. Right. That's, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Well, let's see. Let's see that. Let's see those. I don't see those. Well, I've lived on tour with rappers, and it's fun in the Waffle House. Oh, okay. All yeah. right, all right. But you're going in with you're you're going in with like a, a um, what do you call it? A, a well, everyone in there has their own entourage, or an entourage, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it that's going to be, be fun if you go in with an entourage. It could be fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, should, I mean, at this point, just... Waffle House needs to put a, a, out a, a collection on like a, like like almost like the old like the bum fights. <laughs> or, or, or the best, yeah. the be yeah, best of backyard wrestling. You, you I mean, I if I saw online, like <laughs> it's like volumes one and two of the best Waffle House brawls. I, I would, buy I would it. get that. I would buy it. Like they're at that level. So take it for what it is. They're not putting on airs. You Wait. come, you get a waffle. Maybe you get threatened. Maybe you now, don't. Can I? Like, like enter at your own risk. Work at your own risk. If you go to a Waffle House or you work there, you already know your game on. You are down to clown. So when you go to a Waffle House. You're not like, oh my god, a fight's breaking out. You're like, oh my god, a fight's breaking out. No, you're and getting then you caught maybe... up in it, dude. I don't know why you think you're just gonna get to be a bystander, man. No, you're not gonna get caught up in it. If you open your mouth and talk to them, yeah, you'll you get caught up. No, you you sit and watch. A chair's you eat fly silently. across the room you and duck. hit you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You eat silently at the Waffle House. The only time you open your mouth is to order the food. You eat silently and you wait for the action. That is <laughs> I, what you do. I would like to put. I would like to put menu against menu. There's no contest. Let's do it. Denny's menu. Look at this. Denny, look at the categories. Melts and handhelds. <laughs> to be <laughs> fair. To be fair. Pancakes and crepes. <laughs> to be fair. Denny's is they, Denny's is covering no. every shade of the spectrum of the food menu. Well, well, well but that, but that's not that's not a fair comparison because Denny's Why? is a full service diner that serves other. I'm saying Waffle that's House. Of, that's... Correct me if I'm wrong. Are they not just? There, there's more than it's, breakfast. There's burgers. There's steak. Melts. There are, steak and eggs, aren't there? Is there is steak and yeah. eggs. Let's get steak a price and eggs check on that steak and though. eggs at the Waffle House. Steak and eggs is breakfast. Look, Denny, Waffle House is mainly breakfast. They got no. It's all breakfast. Breakfast sandwiches and melts. Waffles, hash browns. It's all. It's all. It's all breakfast. There's got to be steak and eggs. Biscuits. Okay, they have burgers and stuff. Ha! Fair enough. But you know what I like about. But them they too? also hit. Their pictures look real. That's it also. It doesn't look that great. That, so it's you know, yeah. like, but, but I but I appreciate that. Like, like look at that like, slab like, of meat. Yeah, like go back one. Take take a look at that city ham right there. Okay, city they, ham. They could have put it on a piece what of china. What does that mean? They could have put it on some. They busted out a plastic white plate and they laid it. They they didn't hire a, they didn't hire a marketing firm. Okay. The waffle guy took out his phone. They threw a piece of, a, 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 a basically it's Canadian bacon on a plate, and they took that photo. They uploaded City that photo. Ham is I've... undoubtedly a dog whistle for dead cop. Yeah. <laughs> Look, they got country ham. They got two cuts of ham. The, the country ham of the sheriffs. <laughs> <laughs> the country ham looks good, man. I mean, look, that looks really look, good. Hold on, they they do have all the food. Look, it's a pork chop right there. And <laughs> by golly, man, they just threw that pork chop yeah. on a white plate and took a photo. It looks like it looks like prop food. This but looks like I fake almost, food. No, almost. but it doesn't. It doesn't. I actually give them props. No, no, no. Because I, I, they, I, they're not they're not trying to make it something it's not. It looks. I don't mean, it looks are like an okay sandwich. Let, let me. I don't mean it looks fake in the sense of they 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 you know gassed it up or whatever for the photos. I mean, it looks fake. Like it looks like prop food in the sense of like 
the hamburger <laughs> looks like a hamburger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's just like hamburger. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing else like going if, on. Like if a kid drew one. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I mean. Um, well, let me bring this up because yeah, this is one of my favorite things here. At Waffle House, you can sit and watch the cooks live and in front of you oh, cook big, everything. Huge. Denny's, these nasty ass chefs, they can put anything they want in there. If they don't like you, they can spit in the food. You can't see anything. I've seen What's it. going on back I've there? I've seen a Denny's with an open kitchen. Not open kitchen, but with a window where you can see the guys in the kitchen. Uh, uh, one out that's, of 800 that's locations. Rare, though. We, uh, right. Waffle House is pulling a page out of some of the Michelin star restaurants of all time. They are not. Waffle you House, can't, you, can't you can only see the cooks at Waffle House because they can't afford walls. <laughs> <laughs> It's no, not, I think it's on. open concept kitchen, and it brings on uh, its own feel. I, I okay. I, I that's, love watching. It, it, that's it, an interesting. It, it's reminiscent I, I, of a roadside diner. You go in, you pull over on Route sixty six. Yes. You sit down, and the guy, the kid, the guy in front of you is griddling them up right in front. It's of you. very roadhouse. It's very. I, I I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. But I will say this: Waffle House's specialty clearly is breakfast. That's the focus. We, we had to click on more. To even get to the other stuff that wasn't breakfast, they are putting the breakfast stuff front and center as the focus. When it comes to breakfast, Denny's, the grand slam. I mean, this is <laughs> the breakfast meal across. This is it. But well, that is I... the Big Mac Whopper, Slurpee, whatever key thing you want to call it of breakfast meals in chain restaurant. That is it, dude. I, I get it, but can I just say this? And I'm I'm devil's ad right now. I'm devil's advocate. But isn't that just they just named the things that they put together. So, like, they didn't create anything with Grand Slam. It's like, basically, it's like two eggs, pancakes, side of bacon, toast, and you get all that, and they call it the Grand Slam. I will so, you're like, the Grand Slam. But you can go and order all those things at Waffle House. I and have a counterpoint to that, though. I'll let you go first. Go ahead. I'll just speak to your point. Yeah. I will say this, and I think that you, will, you might be able to relate to this because you're as old as I am. The, uh, dude, don't you <laughs> remember going to other places... At a certain point in your life, and going, do you have something like the Grand Slam <laughs> where it all comes together? And they go, no. and they would go, no, you have to get twelve dollar eggs, twelve dollar pancakes, and you're like, no, put it I'll all do, together. I'll do you one better. I've said I'll have the Grand Slam, and they go, this is not Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. take out, bring me the Grand Slam. But them putting yeah. it all together, like we know you want a little bit of everything. Yeah. like that's pretty, pretty great. Uh, pretty great. Go, oh, sorry, sir. Go well, ahead. I was going to say they have the grand. Uh, the, excuse me. They have yeah. They have the grand slam. Um, just going off what it's named, the Waffle House has what I order, which is the All Star breakfast. Grand slams, anybody can hit them. All stars are at the top of their game every single year, and they hit multiple grand slams a year, and at a better price point. I think also, Waffle uh, House wins. No, the net is wider. You're an All Star of what? Uh, how many sports? You narrowed it. You whittled it down to breakfast. only baseball. You, Grand Slam yeah, is a I'm baseball that, reference, but, but but all that matters is is what the people know, and the people know the Grand Slam. <laughs> Nobody's going, oh, the All Star. Can you tell people me what the Grand Slam? Out, Waffle House and Denny's, <laughs> but because, also too, because is All Star a version of a, a Grand too. Slam, or is Grand Slam a version of no, All Star? Let's see when they came out. Huh? Let's let's just talk menu name uh, menu item names. Nobody is beating Denny's. Moons over my hammy, the <laughs> Super Bird, <laughs> the Grand Slam, okay. the French Slam. They're, they're Denny started uh, in 1963. Uh, this is something we don't do a lot uh, nowadays. You don't go back and, and look. It was originally opened as a coffee shop under the name Danny's Donuts in Lakewood, California. Denny's was known for always being open and serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Denny's did not close on holidays and nights except where required by law. Many restaurants are located near freeway exits, bars, and in-service areas. But can, can I, Wait, wait, wait. Let me stop on that point. Let's let's tip our hat to the genius of Denny's that they knew open these things near exit ramps <laughs> so they see us as soon as they get off. I think the Waffle House does it. Check this out, though, my friend. The very first Waffle House opened its doors for the first time Labor Day weekend 1955 mm. in Georgia, eight years before the franchising of Denny's. Now the site of the Waffle House Museum. The interior has been lovingly recreated to capture the look and feel of the original restaurant. And uh, it's rooted in Southern hospitality. How do you like that? 2,000 of them spanning Wait, what year states. did it first open? Oh, 55. Oh, wow. So they're older than Denny's. Is there a Denny's Spies museum? Is, I don't know about that. But I will tell you this. Is there a Waffle House museum? 
Yeah. Oh, did it, oh, I, I didn't even hear you say that. I'm yeah, sorry. so they're in 25 states only, Waffle House. So that is going to be, if Denny's is nationwide, that's going to be tough. I've already seen a couple of people. Half the population not, not have been to a Waffle But I've already seen a couple of people that said on Twitter, I don't even have a Waffle House where I live and I'm voting for it. Okay. So, but yes, you're right. You're right. What do some of the people on the phone say? Denny's, I feel like we should all go to Waffle House at Denny's after this for a bite. I'm very hungry. So. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is I'm sh- wait. All I know is that I sure don't feel that all American slam at a Waffle House. Denny's, where the waitstaff looks like they don't wash their hair and the flies go to repopulate and die. <laughs> you have to have at least two violent felonies to eat at a Waffle. House. <laughs> <laughs> I like a violent film. Yeah. When you go to <laughs> Waffle House, it's a food and a show. It's a modern day medieval times. That right there That's captures exactly what you were trying to say. That's such a good line. A modern day medieval times. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Uh, Waffle House, more like Awful House. Never even seen a Waffle House. Waffle House will take an ironic fight vid clout vote. All right. Do you imagine? A joust breaks out in a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> I lose my mind. <laughs> That's great. The thing is, it's a possibility <laughs> at a Waffle House. <laughs> it is. Anything can happen. That's great. Yeah. At a Waffle, House. <laughs> Waffle House has been there for me more than my therapist ever has. <laughs> See, that's where I think you're going to get some real points. I feel like well, I feel like Denny's could take the lead and the win in the sense that it's known, it's out there, it's kind of like this thing that's just sort of been in your life since childhood for a lot of people in one capacity or another. Waffle House, as you get older, for a lot of people, becomes a lifestyle staple where it's like, no, man, once a week I go to the Waffle House at this time after I do this thing because that's my spot. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know. I do like have the arm sleeve. Saying that. I don't know. Well, I'm saying, it, I'm saying it as a pro for Waffle House. Oh, okay. okay. I'm saying that's what, will, that's what will be the biggest, to me, the, got, <laughs> Joe DeRosa looks like a Denny. I got an STD <laughs> from reading this tweet. <laughs> 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 Well, it depends. Uh, night after drinking or a- after working third shift in Waffle House. Sometimes you need greasy food, but Denny's is pretty decent food if you don't need Crave Want and able to hand the greasy food. You know, that's a good point, too. Waffle House is a little more in the zone of, you know, it's a niche thing. It's like when you're in this certain way, that's going to be the thing. I have a question. Denny's is a little more across the board, maybe not as exciting, but uh, it'll get the job done, you know? I have a question. Is, are the waffles good at Waffle House? I, yeah, they're pretty, yeah good. they're pretty good. Like, are they like, are like, like? Obviously, it's in the name. So, is it? Do they specialize in the waffle? Is it like? Yeah, I mean, that's that's you like. That's how I always. You got to go there. You got to get a waffle. I, you don't have to, but you know. I know you don't have to. I don't. Right? No, you can I don't get away like, with not having one. But I think they're pretty good. Don't yeah. they have like a special formula? That's what I'm asking. I think. Essentially, they're known. The thing they're really known for. But do they sell the their one batter thing that I would stores? eat there that wouldn't make me want to shit myself. But okay. but uh, the one thing that I feel like they're really known for. First of all, they have grits, which is hard to find in a chain. Secondly, the hash browns, the like loaded, whatever the hell it's called. They like have different ways of preparing the hash browns, and like there's like a version of the hash browns that I think that have like cheese, oh, okay, and bacon yeah, yeah. and all this stuff, and like that to me, like when people say how much they love Waffle House, they always mention that to me. Is like, oh, but the hash browns like fully loaded or whatever it is, you know. So go. Uh, I'm just saying, you seem to be siding now with Waffle House. I don't hear many positives other than just you know it's a little nostalgic, nostalgic. You know, no, it's... I think Denny's. I think Denny's. I'm not <clears throat> siding with Waffle. I, honestly, I really mean it. I eat. I get a stomachache immediately. The, the, I don't like anything that they really do. Outside of maybe the waffle was fine. Who's got better bathrooms? Uh, Denny's. Denny's. <laughs> yes. Definitely Denny's. <laughs> oh, but but here's the thing. Denny's, you know, I, it's not like I'm driving on a on a road trip and I light up if I see a Denny's. <laughs> but if I'm driving on a road trip and I need to stop and eat and I stop and eat at a Denny's, I'm not mad at it. Like I'm like, Denny's can get the job done any time of day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night. They can service you with something that's pretty damn good. You know, and like Denny's does have stuff that I would go as far as to say, like, oh, I really enjoy that. 
Uh, Waffle House to me is very. I'm seeing a lot of wow. Well, when you're drunk, there nothing beats Waffle House, and it's like okay. So to, for some people, that'll that'll that's what would take the win for Waffle House. Sure, is the nicheness of that. But for me, what makes Denny's better is it's just so serviceable in so many ways. You know, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, only because I do like one. I like one of their desserts. It's the apple. If you could pull up the menu, I think it's the, the apple House? crisp. No, 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 at Denny's. Okay, the apple pie something. It's so good that I will door dash it and accept the ice cream being slightly melted There's just to wow, eat it. Wow, really? Yes. Okay. So we're that's also one of Dante's favorite uh the oven baked like apple oven baked oh, wow. caramel apple pie crisp. Yes, yes, that yes. Good. That actually that is like the good. official dessert of the la- the lads. By the way, is myself hook. Dante Martin, his brother Darius, and uh, Action Andretti. No and way. End of the night, if Denny's is open, we're getting a whole. As a faction, <laughs> we're getting. That's where I'd I'm not crisps. kidding. I had a band in high school called Fancy Lads. Oh, really? Your crew's called the Lads. Yeah. We're all the Lads. I'll say. But, but here's the other thing, too. Um, with. Uh, oh, Denny's milkshakes, man. Denny's makes mean milkshakes. They're really good. Are they? They had a blueberry milkshake when I was in college. It was insane. I'll tell you one thing I just remembered about about Waffle House. Um, in the show, Hugh got punished one time, and he was going to go to a kindergarten and read a children's book to them. And we got to write the children's book. He didn't know anything about it, and so we wrote this book. Called, his name's, well, you know, Q. His name is, uh, his name was Q the Dung Beetle. So we made him a sh- dung beetle, right? Mm-hmm. That's who the character was. And in the book, which we wrote and illustrated, he was just completely down and out on his luck. He was drinking. His wife left him. And when he was at his most despondent rock bottom moment, he turned the page and he is uh, <laughs> preposition- prepositioning, pre- pre- prepositioning, a, uh, propositioning? Pro- propositioning, a prostitute <laughs> in the parking lot of a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 we had to call it Waffle Home because we couldn't get in trouble. I mean, it's no so funny. And it, it, the, the, it, all it says is how much. And <laughs> it's a Waffle Home, and he's in the parking lot, and there's a, 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 a surly looking woman there, and he, it just says how much. And he read this to children. That's so funny. <laughs> that's so funny. So, uh, that's yeah, so take funny. that as you, I mean, as a, as a plus or a that's minus. Great. I don't know. Um, uh, all right. So, so. so yeah, let's. We did the phones. Let's do. We, we we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna go to Tumble Pie. It's called where we pick the winner. We 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 reveal the winner. But plug anything you want to plug first before we do that. Uh make sure you. When does this come out? This one two will be weeks out. from a week from Monday. A week from well, the two weeks in from today. general. Check out AEW Dynamite, AEW Rampage, AEW Collision. Dynamite is Wednesday nights at eight p.m. on TBS. Friday night, AEW Rampage, ten p.m. TNT, and then our brand new show, which is AEW Collision, Saturday night, eight p.m. TNT. You can catch myself, the acclaimed Daddy Ass, scissoring all night long in the. You know, we're the trio's champion, so we're just going to keep winning, baby. <laughs> uh, check that out, and also make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Bowens underscore official. I just started a TikTok, which is Bowens underscore official 37. I love it, Dude, baby. thank you for being here, man. It was so nice meeting you and hanging out. This was really fun. I had a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations we... on everything, man. <laughs> thank you. It's amazing. Yeah, Wrestling's, res- wrestling is, you can't, as much wrestling as you want, you can consume right now, and I watch all of it. So <laughs> I'm going to start back it. in. I'm going to start back in. Please, do, are you? What are you doing Wednesday? This Wednesday? Well, I fly to Toronto on Thursday, so maybe nothing. Q and I, I are going to. to low, but you're going to a show. Q, me, Jay, and uh, far, we're going to uh, Forest Hill Arthur Ashe to watch uh, Dynamite. It, I mean, do you have a, do you have room for one more? Yeah, I, I could. We could I could. The person we deal with. Uh, all right, let me see own. what's up. Maybe I'll come. Yeah. Okay. So when we ha- when we stop, I'll I'll hit them up and see if they can get a throw. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for being here. So how this works is Pimp reveals the winner. Whoever wins has to say to the loser, "I still love you." The loser says, "I love you too." That's it. Okay. Here we go, Pimp. Bubble pie. What do we got? Pimpy's three thousand four hundred votes. Whoa! Whoa! Let's Whoa! go! Whoa! Holy Whoa! shit, dude! I did not. Me it's, neither. First of all, Waffle House wins for those listening. Fifty. 3.2 to 46.8%, which is a, a close battle, but Waffle House is just said it's only in 25 states. That's wild. That's I mean Waffle House that speaks loyalists. to either that speaks to either the strength <laughs> of the Waffle House fans or the hatred right, of Dennis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One or the Dude, other. That's, that's thousands Good stuff, of stuff, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we leave, I gotta end it with this. 
<clears throat> I'd like to ask both of you to throw up your scissors. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> scissor me, daddy. And I'd like to throw up mine, too, and end this the only way I know how by saying, Scissor me, taste buds! Yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's way better than ours. <laughs> taste buds. They come into the mic, talking about the food they hate, talking about the food they like. Two fools gonna fight, but only one food can be right. Taste buds, man, yeah, they come into the mic.